Hello, everybody, and welcome to podcast number 85 of the Gordon and Sharice show. And here we go, honey. We are um, right in the middle of our little mini series that um, sometimes I'm embarrassed to look at you and say this, but this this is an important mini series and we're getting a lot of good feedback and traction from our better living community about it. It's kind of the secret stuff that's not really said. Um, it took us years to process through. It took me years to have words for some of this. But the series is entitled, What I Wish Someone Would Have First Told Me Before I Married a Spouse with Pain. Mm. So we're on our third episode of this. And um, if, excuse me, Sharice, if you would have been told these particular points that we're covering today, would you have still married me? Totally. Okay, good. And that's good. the truth. Good. You know, I, I was wondering there for I a think second. It's, I think it's more of, you know, what do I wish that the younger version of myself could understand or know? Mm. And I think I would have been more equipped because the truth is, and, and maybe somebody doesn't feel this way, and we all have our own story. Maybe the person that uh, that's listening to this is going, I didn't choose to marry somebody in pain, but they became in pain, and they became full of pain, and now I'm stuck with that person, or, you know, they may, who knows I'm what. I'm stuck with that bump on a lot. And, and um, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of stories. Everybody has their story. But these principles are you are universal. These principles apply um, to anybody who is fighting the fight with somebody, and and I'm saying fighting the pain fight. They're fighting that pain monster. They're going through it, and sometimes it's hard because that monster is more invisible to the person who doesn't have the pain. Mm. Mm. Um, and. So it's like you're boxing at the at the air. Some I, I I mean honestly, I, that's probably a very accurate visual of how I've must have looked to you a lot of times through our story. Is just boxing at the air. I'm like trying to box at something. I don't know what I'm going to hit, and I'm just hitting the air every time. You had energy, Shrees. There's no doubt. <laughs> it's you totally were, misplaced. You, you were expending it. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't punch you though? Oh, don't. They're radio silence, Gordon, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Okay, you... let's hit point number one. Yes, totally. Go ahead. All right. So this is a big one for me, um, and it still applies today, that you can't make everybody understand. And when I say that, um, what I'm saying is you can't make everybody people that are not going through pain or they're not they're not in a relationship with somebody that's chronically going through something you can't make everybody understand that situation you just can't it's not your job and i think if, uh, there was a period of time where i thought it was my job to make everybody understand it or um and i i i it's it's just not possible you know, you can't, there's, there's actually a place of rest when you stop trying to make people understand the pain. And, um, I think I, I came to a place of freedom with that, of cool. They don't get it. They're not supposed to, they're really not supposed to. Right. I have a different take on it. Yeah. Okay, I'm really glad that we have the Gordon Trees platform, podcast series, books, different things that we're doing right now because we can target our information mm -hmm. about painful suffering and transformation. So we have it in a place. But dealing with our relationships, our community, our churches, through the years, when we first started, people were overwhelmed and they could not understand painful suffering. Mm -hmm. They could not understand why it wasn't going away, why the miracle prayers didn't occur. They just couldn't understand it. And then people that we haven't seen for a number of years, then they also can't understand, how did I become transformed? True. Oh, and it just must be Gordon. So, I mean, there are some people that don't even think it's available for them. So what they do is, is like, okay, you broke the odds, but that really can't happen. 
Right. Okay. Big lie, people. Big lie. And so the reason we have the platform mm -hmm. is there is a percentage of people where transformation is, is, is a possibility. Okay. And that's why we share. There is a discipleship mode to it. But the point is people misunderstood about pain mm -hmm. and people can also misunderstand something about about the transformation that occurs absolutely gordon so, on both sides of that spectrum absolutely we've lived it but but how do you i mean how do you base your life you don't live for people to understand you do you i don't let other people's opinions form my decision making mm -hmm. or my problem solving or the way that I'm going to walk out my faith. I always move inward first. That's powerful. And if you lived to be understood first, do you think you would be frustrated? I, I've, I've known not to do that because we're, we're in a culture today where people are not going to read, study, research. Mm. It turns into a popular poll. It turns into True. a social media tweet. Yeah. It turns into a photograph or a video yeah. in order to develop comprehension. And that's not enough. And, and I wish that somebody would have told the younger version of me, okay, they may not understand your marriage. They may not understand why you love somebody that's in pain. They may not understand any of it. It doesn't require validation from somebody else you're valid and and you can be the hero of your own story in this you don't have to wait for somebody to validate you in fact stop waiting because that day may never come or it may come so far later that when it does come it doesn't even matter because you validated yourself because you've stayed in the story and you're not looking for outsiders to validate you. And we live in a world, like you were saying, mm -hmm. where it's the popular vote or you're canceled. If you're not, if you're not valid, you're canceled, right? And, and it's so sick because the, the truth is believe in yourself in the process. It's, it's okay. Your, your story is still being written and formed. So don't go and try to make everybody understand that. Just don't. It's, it's energy you don't have to expend. Even if it's your closest family members, even if it's whoever, stop expending the energy on that. And like Gordon said, go inward. And as the spouse, I've gone inward too until I could, until I, I developed a language for this until God gave me a language, until he put his breath upon me, until he gave me the wisdom. I didn't get it from, from outside sources. Well, if we wait for other people to understand everything about our lives mm -hmm. or the imaginary thoughts that we have in our mind that they actually want to understand everything, we will remain divided and scattered. And here's, here's what's going to happen. You're never going to find your purpose. That's so good, Gordon. Okay. And do you believe that when somebody's in pain, they can still have a purpose? I know they can. You're you're the living proof. Absolutely. That your purpose actually just be, began. Your true purpose. And the purpose is your route to healing. Yes. So if your purpose is to become a prayer warrior, God's going to change you in your prayers and he's going to transform you in some degree, even if you don't have a lot of remarkable uh, physical changes that mm -hmm. might occur. You can have inner changes that creates a new purpose. And those inner changes creates a new person on the inside. Absolutely. And it, it has not just for you, Gordon. It has for me, too. It totally has for me. Right. That's the benefits in sharing in the sufferings of Christ. How many times have we misunderstood what it means to share in the sufferings of Christ, theologically speaking, or within the construct of the church, right. the American church? Yeah, You're It's right. a topic that's rarely f addressed, especially mm -hmm. trying to fully address it. So our messages today with the platform mm -hmm. Or to try to equip the body of Christ, regardless of denomination. So true. Okay? It's the equipping. 
It's the equipping with the Word, equipping with the experience of the Holy Spirit, equipping with some practical tips. Mm -hmm. It's helping people to be strengthened in their faith. 100%. So, and it, it ties right into the next point. Which is a tough one. Point number two. T point number two. And yes, it's find a community. Don't do this alone. Okay. How do you find a community? You know, Gordon, for us, I will say it's been years and years of a desert, dry place. We've had, we have many friends, many people in our life, but to find a community is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And the truth is we couldn't fully find it. So we've created it. We've created it. And, um, but it had to be created from a healthy place, not a place of trying to put expectations on everybody to understand or to fix things, right? So we, God, God brought us in our perspective and in our internal world with him into a place first of communion. That first communion is with Christ before we were really ready to have a community to develop a community. I'm, I love the better living community that's growing. And practically speaking, I really enjoy the new church and all the new connections in Costa Rica. Totally. The Beach Community Church. Yes. And their focus is not to do this. This is what I like about Pastor Perry. Mm -hmm. Their focus is not to change people. So you have a you have a 150 congregation of English speaking people on Sunday morning, and then you have a the Spanish a, church, the Spanish church on Saturday night, and you're going to have people from all walks of life. Listen, when you go to Costa Rica, it's like going back into the 70s, and you're seeing the grind, not just of poverty, mm -hmm. but you're seeing people. You're seeing people living together like in America. You're seeing all these different behaviors that are not consistent with upright, moral, proper, etiquette yeah. ways of living that you it's would see. It's not churchy church. It's not pharisaical. Yeah, okay? true. It's raw. And so the message there is not, from the pastor's point of view, it's not to change people's behaviors that they're dealing with culturally. It's to show them Jesus. Totally. And then Jesus changes their behaviors. Yes, so it's extremely non-judgmental. So the person in chronic pain can fit there. You identify with that. Very, very much mm -hmm. so. Their voice is valid. They they want to totally. hear what they have to say. I would agree. So in all of their honest and raw humanity, even in pain and suffering and impoverishment, okay, the point is, is let's meet Jesus as we are. Yeah. And we rarely see that. And and so in, in to a person in pain, you're not required to fix yourself before you walk into the door. And I think you've felt that from some institutions or places that we've been. Absolutely. Like you have to fix yourself and then you can be presentable. And no way. Oh, the, or the rawness and realness of relationship of first with Christ and then to bring into a community the realness of life. Mm -hmm. The enemy works on this idea of misunderstanding and trying to make you believe that there is no community. Yeah. And it will be like this, mm. and I'm sharing our lives. I'm not boasting on it. I'm sharing who we this are. This is a progression, right. too. Be, be, it's taken who, years. Here's who we are. Yeah. We're very generous. We're very loving. And we make mistakes. But in our generosity, the way the enemy works in our own minds is all the people who don't understand us in pain, they'll still take from us. They'll still grab from us. Mm -hmm. And the enemy tries to come in and tries to make us basically push away from them because you do feel an extra load. Mm -hmm. But the enemy takes what's best for us in our gifts mm -hmm. And tries to make them as weapons against our own soul. That's so good, Gordon. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So understanding gets so convoluted in its true meaning. 
okay? And that understanding piece of finding a community and not being alone is saying that connection is actually possible. And, and Gordon, let's go back to the better living community for a minute. Yes. Because there are so many people that have responded by feeling like there's a safe place. They haven't had their voice heard. There is a place where you don't just have to vent it to everybody. It's a private group. And being able to know you're not the only one. Mm. I mean, as the spouse, you know what I'm, I'm really happy about is that it isn't just the people that are in the chronic pain condition that are writing. It is the other person. It is the other person. It is the spouse. It is the one who is saying, oh, I've held this in. And now I, I, I do have a community and it's growing. And we can't underestimate that. Even if I wish we could hug every person that's written and poured their heart out. I, we're, they're all over the world. Well, Sharice, there may be a day. Okay, seriously, there may be a day where we have a conference and we get to hug some of those people. I would love to. Because we're going to have advanced conferences someday. You know that. And and the point is this, you know, you don't have to go it alone, but it, it may take years to get there. It may take time. And it may be a lonely place for a while. It's okay. But, but, but when you do, like connecting into the Better Living community, if you do have a local church that you can plug into, those are important things to do. Um, it, it, it's okay. The tendency is to fully withdraw. Either, either when you're in pain or you're watching somebody in pain, it's so easy just to fully withdraw. Right. And that doesn't do anybody any good. There's something called synth- synthesis. So you're synth- synthesize, excuse me, synthesizing <laughs> the information that you're gathering about pain, and there's a lot of mixed signals, and there's a lot of harshness, and there's a lot of difficulty, okay? But when you're in a community, let's just say Gordon Trees. I know we benefit from this. When people share, we even grow in deeper understanding about what we've been through Mm -hmm. because we Mm -hmm. know we're continually arriving. Very much so. We benefit as well. Mm -hmm. So we synthesize the information better, more appropriately, more effectively, and then we're able to take that information and walk out more practically with our own lives. Good. It just is a validation point. Let's go to point number three. Okay, this is one that... I have learned through the years um, that is probably one of the biggest keys of my side of this marriage. And that's your prayers make a difference. Your prayers make a difference, people. Share. (laughs) You know, um, again, I was and still struggle with this, the fix-it spouse or the the trying to do everything externally, spouse, trying to work it away, trying to do this, trying to do that. And I'll tell you what, that that part of me that will just lay my burdens down at the feet of Jesus and become the Mary instead of that Martha for just a little while. And honestly, both of those Mm. sisters are important. You know, Martha doesn't, she's not a horrible person because she was getting things ready. It was out of context, though, because Christ was in the room. And when Jesus is in the room, it's time to sit at his feet. Mm -hmm. And when he's in the room, it's time to commune with him and not worry about these other things. And I'll tell you that, Gordon, I have seen miracles that I couldn't have created in our marriage for our marriage, and in your body, physical body. Mm -hmm. I have seen miracles happen through the power of prayer alone. It's powerful. It's powerful. And it it wasn't these 911, God, I demand you to do this. That's, That's not the vocabulary. But it's communing with God to say, God, I know you, you understand the suffering. Teach us to grow. Teach us what you want us to know. Teach, teach me how to love Gordon in his pain. And if you take it away, wonderful. But if you don't, let us grow. Let us keep going. And I'm telling you, there's the, the, our, the, 
the power of prayer. It's, it's the electricity that keeps everything else going. Mm. And when we connect our prayers to what the prayers of heaven really are, the throne room of Christ, he, is, he lives to intercede for us. He's praying for each one of you yes, yes. who are listening. Yes, yes. So it's connecting our our prayers with his. He's already praying. It's connecting to them. Mm-hmm. It's having ears to hear. Mm-hmm. You know I want to talk about prayer. And the way that I view prayer is as follows. Mm-hmm. There were so many times when we were younger in our walk of faith and we were dealing with gigantic problems about pain that we could not even fathom. So it's almost like we were a child and we're dealing with the Heavenly Father and we're dealing with Jesus Christ. We have a Holy Spirit in us. We're a child in our petitions. Mm -hmm. Yes, they almost seem desperate. We're almost we're almost screaming, God heal us and we we're going to take your name and we're healing it and we're doing it like this and God, here's this petition, that petition, here's this need, here's that mm-hmm. need. I want this. I want this. I need this. I get this. And then through the years, through that waiting period as he hears our prayers, even when his, our prayers are are so frantic, yeah. And so desperate, and we're almost immature in our prayer language, okay? Through the years mm-hmm. as we've developed, our requests are almost as follows. Lord, teach me your words to healing. Yes. In other words, you're surrendering your will to him even more so. Yes. Don't teach me the words that I see just in a church structure. Teach me your words about healing. God, we have a relationship. I don't want to be the foolish child. I already know that my prayers to you, A, I want to glorify you, Mm -hmm. praise you, Mm -hmm. but I also know you do this automatically. Mm -hmm. There's a healing component that comes through in this sense. He's moving us from old to new. Totally. He's growing us and developing us in our understanding about our own prayer life. We're changing just because we said the words, and they don't have to be perfect because we're connected with him. 100%. Okay? That's part of the power of prayer. And, you know, I think about this. If I were in the same, we are in the same home, living in the same home, and if you and I went for a week without talking to each other, which we we can't even barely go five minutes. Honey, you call me 10 times a day. Even if we have a little tiff going on. I mean, it's over fast. But the truth is, what if we just ignored each other for a week and we I, were I, in the same house? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. No. I'm not doing and, that. And the truth is, though, why do we do it with the Lord? Why, why would... Why would you take for granted... And I'm not saying you, Gordon. I'm just saying, why would anybody take for granted that Jesus is in the room and not talk to him. Right. And he's there. He's there when you feel him the least. He's there when you have no feelings at Mm. all. He's there when you are absolutely angry. He's there when you're absolutely destitute in your soul. He's there when you're not getting the intimacy from your spouse because they live in pain that you're requiring and need. I, and I, I think we don't pray because we disbelieve. That's right. And if you and I did not, for instance, communicate for a week, it really wouldn't be about disbelief. It would be about anger and wanting to get our way. True. Yeah. And I think with God, that disbelief is a cover mm-hmm. for us being angry and not getting our way right. with pain. So we step back. And God is saying, draw closer to me so I can draw closer to mm. you. I, I swear, Gordon, the times where I've seen you in your deepest times of intercession, which I know when you're hurting. It's hard. You don't want to sometimes. It's hard sometimes. You, you, you'll you say you have contemplative thoughts in your mind, but it's hard to pray. Like, it's just hard to physically pray. And But when you, when you cross over that, I... I it's like there is someone different in that room Mm. because 
there is something that is coming from the inside out that is almost like a fragrance or an a, a, it, it's it's it says some, in scripture it's an aroma it, it is like i see it i feel it i smell it i it there's there it goes it transcends my senses but i can sense it mm-hmm. and and i think it's the same with me being the spouse when you Absolutely. see me in that calm and still and centered place with god and it comes out in your creativity and your writing and your devotionals and totally the way you can communicate, especially with spouses and other women. Yes. Okay. Thank you see you. it. Point number four, Sharice. Oh, you're keeping me on track today. I'm telling you. Um, okay. I want to say this and I mean it. I really, really, really mean it. Spouses, friends, family members, whoever is living with the one who is in pain, you've got pain too. You've got pain too. And your pain might not be physical, but it it is certainly emotional. So don't deny your own suffering. And that's the point. Don't deny your own suffering. You know, again, when I was in the workaholism stage and the escapism part of, of our story in marriage, I was denying my own suffering. I couldn't look at it. I couldn't say, I'm also the one in pain. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want, and somebody on on our Facebook Better Living Community wrote this too, that she didn't want to be the spouse who has a spouse in pain. Right. And like, I, I get it. So I didn't, I, there was a time where I didn't want to be that spouse either. So I, I would deny my own suffering and pretend that everything is okay and just plow through. Oh, everything's fine. Everything's good. It's like I I went through a time of wanting the sympathy from people, didn't get it. So then I just plowed through. You compartmentalized as well. That's that's true. And then I started I started manifesting my own problems physically because of my emotional pain. Yes, and you did. um so I was denying that I was suffering. Mm. And I'll tell you this, anybody who loves somebody who's in pain it's okay to admit you're suffering too. Yes. It's okay to say, I'm hurting because this hurts me. I can't change it. Mm. I want to change it, but I'm hurting. I'm suffering. It, it's okay. There's a breakthrough when you can admit that. And, and you don't have to you know, be the victim and lick your wounds. That's not it. It's just realizing the truth of that so that you can begin to heal, mm-hmm. so that you can begin to take upon you we have to take our own cross i can't take gordon's i want to take yours well i'm not carrying mine if i try to take yours right and i can't deny that i'm also in pain right when i love you so much and i can't i there are times where i can't make it better well i have a quick response to don't deny your own suffering yeah and the response is embrace it Good. Embrace it fully. Not embrace the mm. pain. Embrace the one who created you and knowing that you're walking through the tunnel of fiery pain. I love it. Okay? Yep. And and part of that is this. It's also a wake-up call. So we've addressed these questions to the spouse. Well, that spouse could be a partner, friend, family member. It might not be a married spouse. Mm-hmm. Okay? I would talk to the people in pain right now, and my message would be this. Please open your eyes to the painful suffering that they're trying to endure as well. Be compassionate. That's that's great, okay? Gordon. Yeah. You're working as a team. Yeah. You need a team. Yeah. And, and the best team starts with you and your spouse and God. That is the best team to start it, that beautiful triangle, mm. that, that triangle of discipleship. That's the best way to start the walk mm. through the journey of suffering. Thought for the day, and then we'll finish off. My thought for the day as the spouse, hello, spouses, hello, people that are in my position. I'm going to remind you of something today. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Keep going keep going. Don't go in denial, denialism. Don't go into your own hole. Keep going in sweet communion with God. Keep going. You might be really hurting too, 
I get it. And I get that way even now, but keep going. Mm. It's worth it. Beautiful. My point would be this for the person who's in pain, who's acknowledging the spouse also has pain. Become that leader mm. to help them follow the leader of all leaders, the king of all kings. Become that individual who can help bring them to God because God will ultimately change them and give them the most comfort about their own afflictions. True. And sometimes the person in pain can only help out a certain percentage. Maybe it's 30% or 40%. Mm. And sometimes those hidden pains are also like mysteries under the cross. The deeper inner life that we have, the Holy Spirit exists. Yeah. And he moves right. us through that in transformation. That's beautiful. Okay. How do people get a hold of us, Sharice? Gordonandsharice.com. Go to our website and subscribe. We want people to be a part of our podcast show weekly. Um, sign up. If you are on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube. Our Apple podcasts are there. Um, you okay. can also go to our Better Living community on Facebook because we really, really, really want to keep this sacred and private group so that we can have authentic and real and deeper conversations. And what I would say, I'm going to focus in on it. Um, this is this is a growth time yeah. that, that's happening in our say lives. It. Two things. When you go to our website, download our audiobook introduction. Yeah. If you haven't purchased the book, mm -hmm. it's a free gift for you. Good. Download that. And number two, Go to YouTube and subscribe. Mm -hmm. You should see what we've done with podcast highlights. Yeah. I have personally spent 26 days. You do not know how many hours per day. <laughs> After kidney surgery, too. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Where I went through it and highlighted the in, topics. In, in time increments, all mm -hmm. the topics. So if you want to go to a podcast, but you only want to hear two and a half minutes of something, it is categorized yes. on YouTube. Yep. What a beneficial tool. Absolutely. So YouTube and download our audiobook That's introduction. That's awesome. I'm going to see you next week, Therese. We'll finish the series. Nope. Are we going to finish it? We will. Yeah. We have one more. Okay. And then, then I think we're going to move into discipline a little bit. Help people Whoa. really tackle that one. But we're going to come up with a nice title for that yeah, when series. When you say that, I get scared. So I can't wait. Okay. See you next we, time. We'll see you then. I love you, honey. Thank you. Love you too.